Um, as we get into this, our next opponent, San Diego State, um, a lot of similar traits to uh, Michigan State in the fact that their, their DNA is, is very simple. Uh, they're going to run the football, and they have a good running attack, a little bit of a play-action football team offensively, uh, do a lot of things well, don't beat themselves. Um, yesterday I showed the team the tape of them down with uh, six minutes left in the fourth quarter, fourth and nine. They converted, and from there they win the game 28-14. Uh, so they're very, very, uh, very well coached defensively, uh, similar scheme, uh, a lot of movement by the front. Uh, they've won a lot of football games, uh, and, and they know how to win. I mean, they have a winning, Rocky Long has built a winning tradition. Uh, and, and they know how to win. They're a very capable uh, football team. So we got our work cut out for us. Uh, they do a great job of taking the ball away uh, over the last three or four years. You can look at the numbers. They're 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 really good defensively. So we we got to play we got to play really well. Uh, this is our first road game, uh, which is new for us. We haven't uh, been in that atmosphere. We've had the comforts of home the last two games, which has been great. Uh, but now we got to go on the road and uh, try to win a football game. Questions. Yes. You guys didn't have a deep history together. Like when you were in the NFL, you, you knew a lot of the guys in the ground. Right? Yes. You didn't have a history of them. What was it that when you got a chance to actually sit down and talk to them? What was it that you said? Well, I, I followed uh, San Diego State because that's my alma mater, obviously. And um, I knew a lot about Danny and, and Coach Rocky Long. And, uh, you know, when you're sitting at the desk that I sit at uh, in Bristol for, for nine years, as you watch games, college games, as well as pro games, um, you you follow who the assistants are and coaches. You kind of kind of follow them, you know, because that's just what you do as a coach. Because you always get calls uh, when you sit in the seat I sat in as a former head coach um, from people looking for coaches, and whether it's a college coach, whether it's a pro coach, uh, because you're tied, you're, you're always tied to, to to people, and so you do that and uh, you keep a list of guys that you think are good coaches. And when you visit college campuses, which I did in, in, uh, in the springs for a lot, of, a lot of different colleges, went there for two or three days and evaluated them and, and sat with the coaches, you just hear coaches talk and uh, you watch guys. And when I decided to take the job, um, there was a list of, of guys that I had already. I had a list. I had a list of offensive guys and defensive guys. One of the offensive guys was already here, uh, knowing he was probably going to leave sooner or later. I had a list. Well, he left. Well, Coach Likens was the next guy. He was the next guy on the list. Uh, defensively, uh, I've watched them from afar, and I like the concept of what they're trying to do and the fact that it's a 3-3-5. So in college football, because of all the multi-formations and the personnel groups, you don't have to change defensively. You can keep five defenders on the field and the back end of your defense. With that, you still have the ability to rush four or five or bring pressure and run your coverages. So it was unique in the, in the sense that I said, that's really the way to go in college football. If you can master that defense. Now, a lot of people play four, three, uh, different concepts, but it's a space game. And so with that being said, you have to have athletes that can cover in space. Linebackers and safeties have to be able to cover in space. You can't have a guy just a run player anymore. So that was unique. And watching them and just watching the numbers over the years, it was, he was my first call. I mean, I called Rocky, he was my first phone call. When I said, okay, who do you, look, who do you like? I said, I got five guys. The first guy is, is Danny. Uh, I like their defense. I think it fits my mindset of uh, how to play college defense in, uh, in college football. So I'm glad it worked out. For this game, how much does it help having Danny in particular? Well, it helps and it hurts <laughs> because they know Danny too, right? And so it's kind of a, you know, it's, it's kind of like when I can remember and I know his manner, you know, I know Danny's emotions right now. Um, the hardest game for me to ever coach against an opponent was Tony Dungy. I mean, I was like miserable all week because the questions were coming up, you know, was how was Tony, you know, and Tony was my mentor and we came in the league together. The guy's like my brother, you know, and we had to play him. And I was like, I don't like, you know, and, and we were fortunate enough the first time we played him, we won, obviously, but he got, he got me back the next time, but um, it's tough because he's been under coach a long time. And, uh, you know, coach gave him an opportunity when there wasn't an opportunity at times. And, and, and he's been in that system, so he knows it. So they know Danny, too. So that's going to kind of be the chess mask of it all. As, as you were 
commuting to and you heard the crowd noise being piped in. What are the biggest challenges with playing on the road that you have to be aware of? Well, you're right, the noise of um, of the signal calling. We, we did it, you know, uh, last last week because we knew defensively um, your crowd is going to be in the game. And because of the, the concepts we run on defense, if they change the formation or motion or shift, we have the ability to go to another coverage. Okay, so there's noise. So Danny's not in the huddle. They got to communicate that. It has to be communicated. And it's dicey, you know, because it's loud. And so you got to have hand signals and you got to have certain things you got to do. So we made sure that that was covered uh, in practice, that we were used to doing that. Yeah, it's hard, always hard on the offense. But see, for defensively, offensively, when you're at home, it's not because they're not going to. The crowd's going to get quiet. Defensively, that's when they get noisy, which we want. But we still have to adjust as well. So you got to communicate on the road. More difficult for for uh, for offenses, especially if you're backed up. Now, San Diego, my recollection, they haven't changed the stadium since I was there. It's it's open, but they're going to get a good crowd there, and it could be loud. I, I remember going in there for playoff games. Yeah. Playing those guys is loud. I mean, it can get loud, you know. So it'll be a good crowd. So how, how prepared do you think they are for the boys' aspect of handling Well, that's what we got to find out. We haven't played a road game. That's something. Every, everything we do now is new for me with these guys because I haven't felt them. You know, I haven't felt their reactions and what's going to happen. And I think you, as the game is being played out, you you watch your sideline, you watch your mannerisms, your players. And if, if you watch me on the sideline, I'm always dealing with players within the framework of when calls not being made. I'm going to a certain group because I've certain, seen certain things and trying to visit with them about here's the situation and always explaining things in a way that is very calm, very direct, um, and they, they, they're, they listen. You know, you, you've got to get to the stage. I've always said in a football game, um, I'm almost opposite of – the reactions of the crowds and everybody in the crowd, as people get loud, I talk real soft. And that makes them focus in. I don't holler, I kind of talk real soft to them. And they all have to come in there and look at me. And I look at their eyes and I tell them, this is what's happening. And it's, 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 it's kind of, it works. Because everyone else is hollering. Fans are hollering, everybody's screaming. There's a lot of chaos on the sideline. Well, while do you control the chaos? Is someone has to be a voice of reason. And hopefully I'm that voice. But when I speak to them, I speak to them almost like I'm speaking to you guys, real soft kind of like. And it makes them focus on what I'm saying rather than get caught up in all that other stuff. So you talk about San Diego State, obviously you're very familiar with what the defense that you're going to play. Is it tempting or easy not to be extra creative in a week like this? Or? Well, I think what you have to understand is, and I tell the players this all the time, and I'm a big believer in this, just do what you do. Just do what you do. I mean, don't, 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 we're not going to change who we are because we play San Diego State and they, they, they have a, uh, they're familiar with some things we do. Um, but we, we do some things different too. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I've kind of been in the kitchen with them, you know, looking at some things and going, well, I don't like that sauce right there. I want this other kind of sauce, right? My wife won't let me get in her kitchen, by the way, but defensively they let me get in the kitchen. So uh, there's some things we do a little bit different and um, that's okay. It's just it's part of it. You've know, you got to understand that when you have a head coach that was a defensive guy, so that's how it works. You mentioned after Michigan State that eventually the guys who make plays make plays. Manny in the field, but Eno made a couple on that oh. final drive for the field goal. Moving past the injuries from last year, what do you see as his ceiling? He's tough. He's a tough football player, a very focused football player. He's one of the guys when they install the runs, and this is where he's at because he wants to know what the people in front of him are doing. He sits in the offensive line room. He sits in that front row with the offensive line because he wants to see exactly what these guys are doing when we, run our, when we run our run plays because the back has a lot to do with the success of the offensive line. How he presses the hole creates running lanes for him and the, and, the, and the fact that the lineman can get on the second level and get to the backers. If he doesn't do that, then the backers can flow free. The more you can bring the linemen, the, the linebackers into play thinking the runner's going to play and hit that hole, it creates – angles it creates other holes because now a lot of running backs don't realize that but he's smart enough to figure that out so he's a complete player he can run inside can run outside and you made the point and i made the point two big first downs on that drive big time big time plays which helped us win Trust that, that Jeff, that we gotta get 
Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> Sound like I'm in Bristol. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, got off. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, the same as last week. A team that's won a lot of games um, that are comfortable in, in close games. And uh, we're going to have to get comfortable. You know, sometimes when you have a high-flying offense and you're not in the 20s before halftime, you get like, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. It's just you don't get in the 20s all the time. You, know, you have to play a certain – we had to play that kind of game last week where it was every – Completion every five yards was a big gain, and for these guys, especially offenses in college football, it seems like if you don't make a 10 yard gain every time you touch it, like you're disappointed. Well, they had to play a whole half where there wasn't a lot going on, so this could be the same type of the game. Now, we need to make some explosive plays because we have some explosive receivers that helps you, but you can't panic when, when things don't operate the way you want to operate, you know, you just got to continue to play. Well, it helps you because it's confusing to, to play this defense with the fact that all the movement. Uh, but with that being said, they're different players on that side. You know the system, but you don't know the call. You don't know, you don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> you don't know what stunt they're going to run. I mean, that'd be fun if you knew what they were going to run, but you don't. So I think for us offensively, and we haven't been consistent at this, we haven't been consistent at sustaining drives. You know, we've kind of, at times we sustain something, or we get a foul, or we we get ourselves into a third and long and we don't convert. So we, we have to be more consistent on offense. And I think this defense can give you problems. It can get you behind the chains. And we were behind the chains a lot uh, against Michigan State until about the sec third, middle of the third quarter. Then we, we got our rhythm. But um, they can throw you out of your rhythm. Thank you. Thank you. All right.